guess uh, we can get started with this new one. Uh, we are Diametric Convergence. We have another episode coming to you now. I am Andrew, always once again joined by Brandon. And on this show, we have Cassandra Hidalgo. Yeah, uh, this is an exciting one. She'll be talking about spirit guides and uh, welcome, Cassandra. We're so excited to have you on, and uh, I'm sure this is just the first of many episodes, so thank you so much for being here. Uh, yeah, thank yeah. you guys welcome. for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. Right on. Yeah. Um, I know you're a wealth of knowledge. Is Is this your first podcast you've done, or have you been on some before? No, this is technically the first one I've done. Um, I do have another one lined up with a, a good friend. Uh, that will probably be next week. But I have a feeling it'll Ooh. be the first of many is because, you know, yeah. the spirit wants me to talk about lots of things. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Well, we can be that. we can be your uh, warm up, warm up gig yes, and get you get you <laughs> get you some experience. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So right. for the audience, uh, since they've never met you and Andrew's uh, just meeting you for the first time through the wire, um, who are you and what are your passions? Uh, yeah. Tell everyone about that. Well, I'm a massage therapist. I've been doing massage for mm. a little over 10 years. And like I've always been into energy, but after I got into massage, I started noticing, you know, different things coming into, you know, my reality, whether it was like feeling somebody's energy or like visions kind of coming into my head. And uh, that led me down the path to kind of seeking out what the heck that was because, you know, it's easy to write it off as like, oh, crap, I'm hearing voices. <laughs> I'm crazy, mm. you know. So um, oh, yeah. I I sought out I, – I kind of – I don't even remember how exactly I, I came across like a psychic development class. And so I was, you know, kind of fine-tuning and honing in skills there. And then by going to that, I – I uh, was introduced to like past life regression and hypnosis and whatnot. So I kind of like have a big bag of all kinds of tricks that I do, <laughs> but that's the gist of it, of yeah. massage, energy work, healing, hypnosis. Awesome. And were you born in Colorado or where are you from? Um, I'm from technically it's kind of in between Utah and Hawaii. My mom's from uh, Hawaii and my dad was from Utah. So I kind of grew up both places there. And then when I was uh, like 26, I moved from Hawaii uh, to Colorado. Right on. So I've been here for like uh, maybe 10, 12 years. I've lost track. <laughs> huh. I think I moved the same time. Yeah. Uh, Where did you that's... move from? I well, I'm from uh, Michigan and then Indiana, and then I went out to Arizona, and then I came out here in about 2008, I believe, right around there. Ah, cool. Yeah. So you know, it took me a journey to get here. I always loved uh, the mountains. I came out here for a concert, and then I knew I'd be back. So uh, it's a beautiful <laughs> place. And grateful to be here for sure. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a beautiful space. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, Andrew, have you had any of those uh, modalities done? I, I think you've had massage before, at, at, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I've had a, my, well, I shouldn't say my fair share. I've had maybe like two or three professional massages in my life. Um, right. The one thing, though, I have just caught on to recently through i guess the wide world of aliens is the pat is the like is like the regression therapy mm, yeah um, past life regression past life and not just like past life stuff like they use a lot of that like the i don't know if you would consider it like hypnotherapy as well because it's kind of is that kind of what it is along the lines of because it's uh, kind of the method 
Yeah, definitely. You you use essentially hypnosis to get them in the state of trance in order to get them to essentially, I mean, in hypnosis, you can travel forwards, backwards, up, down, you know, pretty much anywhere. And um, I mean, from past life regression to life between life therapy, which is essentially like, if you go into a past life, you follow that life until in that life you die, and then you follow that spirit to the other side. And then from there, you can figure out where, you know, why you chose that lifetime. You can figure out why you chose this particular life now and your parents and lessons and all that. So there's all kinds of stuff you could do with past life regression and hypnosis. Right. And and that's, I mean, that stuff's very fascinating. I've always been kind of, um, I guess, curious about that stuff in terms of reincarnation and past lives, uh, with, alien stuff a lot of times they use it on abductees right who, whose minds have i guess been modified if you want to put it that way and then they're able with the hypnosis to be able to unlock those parts of their minds that have been altered so that they can remember what happened um one of the bigger ones i think that's out there um brandon who is the guy we were talking about in our in our space episode dan romanax is that who you're referring to yeah that's the, yeah that's the guy um because it was kind of crazy because he has like a whole book on with like transcriptions from uh, his sessions um his you know his regression sessions and it's kind of odd because they're like and i don't know like how much of this stuff you know was actually happening you know with this guy um but there are parts where it's not him speaking it's it's this otherworldly entity that's speaking through him they're like using him as a vessel but they're accessing him through this hypnotic state so i don't know if that's something that you're familiar with or oh, if that's yeah. more on the I've, fringe or yeah no i've i've actually um that i i've had clients uh, uh kind of go down that rabbit hole essentially trying to explore you know other lives and ended up having uh, the client uh, start going into, you know, describing themselves as like a three fingered being. And, you know, they were watching humanity and watching humans prepare for war and, and whatnot. And, you know, mm -hmm. as I started asking questions, you know, all of a sudden she was like, um, I perceive you have a lot of questions. You can proceed with them now. And so mm -hmm. I was like, okay, is this real? You know, so I started asking questions that I already knew the answer to that I knew my client wouldn't know. Um, mm -hmm. And she was answering them flawlessly. And so I was like, oh, this is real. So <laughs> I just started like, all right, if if you could, you know, have any question you have in the universe answered, like now's the time. So I was asking all kinds of crazy questions and uh, mm -hmm. about an hour into it, she was like, you know, the, the vessel is, uh, or the, she kept referring herself as the subject, which normally in hypnosis people, you know, if they talk about themselves, they're either talking about themselves in the third person, like he or she, or they'll call themselves by name. But mm -hmm. it was the first time I, I heard somebody say, the subject is growing tired or, you know, we have implanted ourselves in the mind of the subject. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, after an hour of this interview, they said the subject is growing tired. We must end the session and we can proceed in exactly one month from today. Mm -hmm. So I proceeded to wake her up. And when she woke up, she was like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And I was like, why? And she said, uh, I, I wasted your time. I fell asleep. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, wait, what, what you don't like, what do you mean you fell asleep? And she's like, I, I, I could feel myself slipping when you were taking me through the tunnel. And the entire time I was just dreaming of how to get out of the tunnel. And the only reason I woke up is because I heard your voice. And I was wow. like, well, you don't remember anything you said. And she looked at me kind of shocked, like, what? I said something? And I'm like, yeah, you just, <laughs> you just like, uh, gave me secrets of the universe. <laughs> and nice. we're supposed to do it again in a month, you know? And um, the crazy part was, because, you know, I get, I get some people asking, like, well, is this real? Like, how do you mm. know it's not the mind just making things up? And, 
even if it was just the mind making it up, um, it, there's something healing to it. I mean, I've, I've had people experience healing through hypnosis, physical healing in their body. Um, and if that's all it was, there's something magical to that. But, right. you know, she, she uh, had another session in, you know, the following month, which was, you know, five weeks later and ended up uh, rescheduling because I think it scared the crap out of her. <laughs> but the week before, which happened to be four weeks after that last session, I had a completely different guy come in and uh, he was like, well, I had some questions, but I guess we'll just see what happens. And through him, they tapped in again and the conversation continued. Hmm. So, I mean, hmm. unless they were, play, you know, playing the trick of the century on me, then <laughs> there's something to it. Right. So do you, do you record your sessions then like play it back for your, for your like clients? Sometimes I do like when in the beginning I, I would try to um, record, but it like sometimes people talk too quietly uh, for the recorder to pick up. And then other times I've had complete like weird interference where you can't even hear. And so I tend to just like write everything down and I have like a weird, like photographic memory. So I could write keywords down and then, um, essentially like remember like, Oh, white hat. Oh yeah. I remember that. Right. That was about like a, this and this and this, you know, yeah, like a, tr like a trigger. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, see, that's always what's fascinating me about all that stuff is just, especially with like the past life stuff too, <clears throat> because I'm, and we talked about this on our last show, just a big believer, a firm believer of the, re, you know, the concept of reincarnation and just, mm -hmm. you know, they, there have been actual scientific studies performed that have proven like these things like especially with like a lot of ch like children will go in and have this stuff done like they have all these memories that they have no idea what they're about but they can track down to like i don't know like a really precise location for some of these memories right so there's I like think so of, many details that they yeah, remember yeah of like all these other lives and just they are put in like most of the time i would assume put into these into these regression regression states or hypnotic states and they just regurgitate the information but they can, it's real stuff that they can follow up on and you know find what they're talking about right so I, I remember seeing that a long time ago and like that's i mean that's i don't know like well how that's not more widely talked about just that kind of stuff because it's it's not i don't know it's like not I don't know, mainstream, I guess to use for lack of a better term, um, where well, it should be, I think. What yeah, are definitely. spirit guides? But there, there are like, people out there. Can you like, explain that? Pardon? Oh, sorry. Uh -oh, sorry. Uh, I was just it, saying like, um, breaking up. Can you repeat yeah, that? No, totally. Uh, so it, with Andrew's question, uh, you know, Andrew's like, how can people not believe it? Uh, maybe we can explain what spirit guides are and then that would help understand better. Yeah, definitely. So like, you know, even going back to the, the regression stuff, um, I, where I work with people in hypnosis, a lot of the times I will actually call in people's spirit guides to uh, assist us because sometimes, you know, people – it's almost like their conscious mind gets too, too much in the way of, of, you know, it's like, if I ask a question about themselves, like, you know, what is Andrew's greatest gift in this life? You know, Andrew might be, you know, very, you know, humble and like, well, you know, I, I heard, you know, through, through a thought that it said that I'm supposed to be this great healer, but no, he, like, I can't, I can't do that. I can't, you know, I can't be that big. Right. So, when you pull a spirit guide in uh, to assist in in the work, it's almost like you know they're just repeating what the what the person says. So essentially, how I explain spirit guides, uh, it's like if you think about Pinocchio 
and Pinocchio had a little Jiminy Cricket. And mm. the Jiminy Cricket's always like, you know, let your conscience be your guide. It's kind of like your Jiminy Cricket that was essentially sent in with your soul before you were born. You had a plan of, okay, I'm going to do this, 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 and this. And your spirit guide essentially knows your plan and it knows um, essentially what you're meant to do, your gifts, your lessons, and they're kind of like a silent cheerleader where they're not mm. supposed to interfere with things like, I mean, unless it's like a life or death thing, um, but they can't stop and shake you and be like, Brandon, what are you doing? <laughs> like, no, this is stupid. You could just, you know, you might get a bad feeling <laughs> or you might get a good yeah. feeling if you go, you know, left instead of right. So it's like very yeah. subtle energies and essentially they're not supposed to really interfere unless you ask. Um, if you ask for guidance, if you ask for help, um, that's when it's like they're there. They can help. They can assist you in things. Totally. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. It's like uh, the little fairies, you know, that are following people around and taking care of you. They're little angels on both of your uh, shoulders, right? And pretty cool. Exactly. And people can have you know, multiple guides, they can have, um, what I've often found is like, you'll have a main guide. Um, and then it's almost like, if you think about like an instance today where I'm like, I need help, uh, with my sprint phone and I'm talking to, you know, Jake in <laughs> India or whatnot. And, and Jake can't help me. And it's like, okay, well, um, can I speak to your supervisor? So spirit guides even have like a guide above them that <laughs> <laughs> will step in if it's too much. Oh, wow. Uh, so does everybody have like alien guides? Does everybody have like, uh, I don't know. I, what are the types of guides? Are there, are there types or they're just like... Uh, whatever spirit you can think of, which is oh infinite. my gosh, yeah, no, I've I've come across many, um, you know, so many that sometimes I'm like, I don't even know what reality is anymore because there's like, so much out there that we can't even wrap our minds around. I've I've come across, yeah. um, you know, certain Maybe. people will have certain guides like. If it, they're a simple soul where they don't have a, you know, they're not meant for like extraordinary, you know, healing or mass awakenings, they'll have like a normal guide that will, you know, just kind of tell them like, okay, you're supposed to be a doctor and you were, you know, meant to do this and that and whatever. But the bigger the soul and by bigger the soul, what I mean is that it's like there are stages of a soul if, if if to yeah, explain, yeah, yeah. I guess to, to explain it a little better like you can look at it as like okay number one through five right so like number one would be a beginner uh number two um is just above beginner but you know before like less than intermediate number three would be intermediate uh for a little more advanced and then you know five is more advanced and depending on, you know, the stage they are in progression of how, th what they're learning, what they're doing, they all have colors to the soul. So like a beginner soul would be a white energy, a white light around them. Intermediate would be more of like a yellow or a golden. And then like a five would be more advanced, which would be more in the like sky blue colors. And right. so if you have like the in-betweens, um, so I find that like, the greater the soul, the bigger the spirit guide. <laughs> so so mm. if I, I run into a client that has like a four or five soul, then you're starting to bring in, you know, some of their guides could be like Buddha or Jesus or Mother Mary, things like that. Mm. Um, more of the beginner souls are just like 
I'm Jessica, <laughs> you know, like, so. like trainees, like, like guides and training and stuff like that. Like the people with bigger souls have like the senior guides and stuff like that. So it's kind of how that works. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Cause, okay. cause usually the, the ones, the souls that are more advanced, they plan more crap in their life. They plan more struggles, uh, so that they can, uh, develop more and and have you know more growth more lessons or help more people yeah if that makes sense (laughs) to me it's almost like there's seven levels like the chakras right if you go off the seven, but you know Mm -hmm. the same color as you described right um and it's like every chakra you unlock you get to see more of the world basically and energetically mostly um So it kind of reminds me of that. And how do you, you know, keep from like, because if you tell people that they'll think you're automatically think you're at the highest level. And then how do you keep, like, how do you keep your ego in check if you think you're the the highest number? You know what I mean? Um, before, So I'm curious. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I guess like, I mean, I haven't, I haven't come across very many, you know, vain, like fours or fives, usually they're either unaware. Um, they're, they're unaware until essentially like say they come to me and all of a sudden, you know, we unlock all of these, uh, these doors and these secrets Mm. and these, um, energies. And, Mm. um, I mean, I've even had, you know, people, uh, I mean, I've, I've been so far down the rabbit hole that <laughs> I've, I've seen all kinds of things. And like, I've, yeah. I've taken, um, people on journeys, like say maybe I was shown something like, um, one time I was shown these pyramids that were, um, kind of iridescent in color, almost like a moonstone on the outside. They weren't like the Egyptian pyramids. And underneath mm. them, they had this kind of light, like a rainbow light energy that was underneath them, like veins of light. And the pyramids above brought up the light through them and essentially like came out the top, like the Luxor in Vegas. Yeah. And um, I was shown that and I was like, what the heck is this? And so the girl who she didn't mean to take me into kind of a trance state it just kind of happened and I was just kind of shown these things and um you know she was like well what is this what is that and I'm like I don't know maybe it's this maybe it's that and and she goes stop guessing you know what it is what is it and I'm like oh it's direct source energy it's direct source light it's creator light that comes up that the the pyramids basically bring up and this is the energy you can call in and if you call it into this life it's almost like direct, pure source energy, unfiltered, right? So yeah. I was shown that space like months and months ago. And so I came across an advanced soul who had didn't know he was that advanced. And so I knew he was because I could tell his guide was more advanced. And mm-hmm. so I said, you know, I, I asked his guide, I said, would it be okay if we took him to the pyramids? And his guide said, yeah, sure. So we go to the pyramids. He goes up to where the light's coming out of the pyramid. And he basically said that the light was coming in um, into his his brow. Like uh, if you can imagine like an upside down pyramid um, that's pointing like the tip of it is pointing to your third eye. And then it crosses there and then it comes into your energy in a, a right side up pyramid. You get what I'm saying? Like a big X. Yeah. And that's how the, the energy, like that's how I saw the energy come in. And he, he puts his hands together in this like open V shape and he puts it right up to his third eye in hypnosis. And he goes, the energy comes in like this. And I'm like, yes, like he's seeing it too. Right. And uh, yeah, after we were done in that space, I took him back to kind of a neutral space and his guide was like, wow, I didn't know that place existed. Like, thank you for taking us there. And I'm like, wait, what? Like I thought 
maybe everybody knew about it, but hmm. apparently not. Apparently, you know, you're only shown as much as I guess you can digest. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> that's wild. I actually had a crazy thing where um, I was taking like psychedelics and uh, one day and it actually like told me to focus on my third eye and that's when it like unlocked everything and I saw an alien. It was really strange, but uh, yeah, that's, that's wild. The third eye definitely has the energy force and uh, it's interesting uh, that you say that. No, but. for sure. For sure. It's, Are yeah. there people who can't be hypnotized or like, like can't do this stuff? So the the funny thing is like people that that say they can't be hypnotized can't be hypnotized because they're they're going in it making that assumption that they're they can't be hypnotized. So uh, unconsciously they're telling themselves and me like sorry there's nothing you can do to hypnotize me. So it's like mm-hmm. they've made that decision. But then there are others that doubt that they're hypnotized. But I think there's such a misconception of what hypnosis really is because so many people think like, okay, you're going to hypnotize me. I'm going to be unconscious the entire time like the girl that tapped into the alien. And I'm not going to remember anything until I wake up. And um, that normally doesn't happen. The only time that ever happens is again, if they're revealing secrets of the universe, um, (laughs) usually what happens is people, um, it's like if, if you guys both close your eyes and, and we talk with our eyes closed and we're just sitting here talking, having a conversation and I'm like, okay, I want you guys to imagine a red ball. You know what the color red looks like. You know what a ball looks like. Just imagine a red ball. And as soon as you visualize a red ball, you're in a state of trance. So you don't have to be in a crazy hypnotic trance to basically go under. Um, To go into like a past life regression, you want to be in, you know, a lot deeper state of trance. But you don't have to be completely out in order to be hypnotized. Um, people hypnotize themselves every day, like driving to work. And as soon as you zone out, it's a state <laughs> of trance, right? Yeah. <laughs> I've done that. Yeah. <laughs> you're driving you're like, oh, did I just run a red light? I have no idea what happened back there. Yeah, exactly. I know. You're like, how did I get here? And how did I not yeah. crash? <laughs> yeah. You just I, don't remember, I don't remember <laughs> any of that, any of that drive yeah, at all. You're an autopilot. But then, yep. you know, the, another misconception is that everybody in hypnosis can see right? So like you're going to see HD and it's going to be so amazing and you're going to be like, you're really there. And not everyone is like that. Um, So how I do hypnosis is essentially I ask the person, okay, you know, close your eyes and describe to me like your favorite place in nature, somewhere you could just go and imagine just being there and, and just being you know, no one's going to bother you. You can just like meditate. And what is that like for you? And the reason you do that is because then they describe back to you how they're imagining the space. So if they say, okay, you know, I imagine I'm on a beach and the, the sand is really warm and I can feel it beneath my toes and I can feel, you know, an ocean breeze and the warmth of the sun shining down. They didn't describe anything visual, right? Mm. So to take them into hypnosis, I wouldn't say, okay, go back to that beach and see the beautiful blue ocean. And, you know, because then they're like, I can't see, it's not working, (laughs) right? So you have to describe back to them the exact same way they described it to you. So imagine feeling that warm sun shining upon your head and imagine feeling the warmth going down into your scalp and it feels good. So you would would describe to them, you know, a lot of feeling, right? Versus the one that's like, I see this, you know, beautiful ocean in front of me and there's birds and green trees. They're very visual. Some people only smell, you know, some people only hear, some people have multiple senses. When I do uh, like meditation or hypnosis, like I, it's, it's, it's like, I don't see clearly. I more have a knowing 
if that makes sense like it, like a like a beyond senses of just kind of knowing where you're at or what's happening versus seeing it in hd right like an intuition in a way too right or like like just just as i said it's it's like a knowing where you know someone can ask me a question like oh where are you and i see nothing but i'm like well i'm I feel like I'm laying on the ground and I'm uh, stabbed in the stomach and I'm laying here. I'm like, I don't know why I'm laying here. And the, the more questions they ask, it's like, okay, well, what happened? Why did someone stab you? Well, they were mm -hmm. trying to get the information. Well, what, what information were they trying to get? The secrets, the knowledge, the, you know? So I would just have this knowing of like whatever just kind of came out of my mouth and just let it flow instead of trying to analyze what I think is happening if that makes sense yeah and does that sometimes like do you just continue thinking about things when you go home or how do you let it go um usually um wait wait, wait what do you mean like if i you, you think of things like, when you go uh, home or just let it go yeah like you, like you replay it in your head of yeah you're like oh my lord like i can't believe i unlocked helped them unlock this piece of them and i mean of course you're gonna think about that and try to uh work with it right i mean there's so oh like like when i hypnotize someone else like after after we had like a yeah. crazy experience oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm like i got books to write <laughs> there's oh, so yeah. Yeah. many crazy yeah. things that you know it's like you walk them through and you and and what's really cool about it is that you know you you walk them through this journey of of going into a past life and say maybe maybe in one life you know in this life like they're having you know neck problems and 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 you know whatnot and you take them into a past life where say maybe they were beheaded Right. Um, right. Right. You know, learn just learning that about themselves can release that energy and release the pain in the neck instantly. Um, but then other times there are essentially like lessons that they go through of like, OK, what did they learn from, you know, like. Okay, for instance, um, I I hypnotized a guy because he was trying to stop smoking. And he was like, I just, I can't stop. Like, I've stopped all of my other vices, but I can't. This is my last vice. And I just, it's like I keep sabotaging myself. Like, I, I feel like I, I don't deserve to be healthy, right? Which are key, key words and, you know, uh, red flags. And so when I took him into... Uh, higher consciousness and introduced him to his guide. His guide said, uh, the sabotage is coming from another life. So we, I asked if we could take him to the other life. And he went to the time of uh, when Roman soldiers were basically sweeping through the lands, just taking over everything, like killing anyone in their path just to conquer the land. And so he was like we're just killing all of these um, indigenous people because we were told to. He goes, I know it was wrong. I, I don't want to do it, but we were told to kill them. And so uh, he ended up like not living. I mean, I guess back then 43 was, you know, older, um, but he only lived to 43 and he essentially drank himself to death from the guilt Mm -hmm. And so when I took him, I had him stay with his soul and we went up to hire, uh, we went to the other side after his death, we went to his council and I asked his council, you know, why that life was affecting this life. And, uh, he says, because the guilt, he's still holding on to the guilt. And they said, but he doesn't have to, because he promised every single one of those people that he killed that he would come back in this life and help them. So like he's a part of this amazing AA group where they do like sweat lodges and like everybody that I've met from that group are like really amazing people. And it's like every single person he meets knew him in that life. And it's like 
he promised to help them. Hmm. So wow. yeah, it's like through other people, they learn lessons, but by being the witness of their journey, you're like, wow, you know, I wonder how many people are beating themselves up for like something they've done in other lives or, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It, it reminds me like, you know how like your feeling is the most important. So like, I don't, I don't want to feel bad for people like less fortunate to me than me because it just feeling bad doesn't help anyone. So right. I just feel like, you know, we're put in this position because maybe in a previous life, the less fortunate were the kings and queens and they have to learn the opposite perspective. So uh, feeling bad for me never helps. Like I, I've done that. I've been in periods of my life where I'm like, oh no, the people over here need help and people over here. And then I forget about myself totally, completely. And uh, so that never works. Um, and then I just feel bad all the time. So I had to figure out how to not feel bad. And that is to remember that we in a past life may have had it different. So I always try to exactly. remind myself that, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we don't have to feel bad yeah. for me. You just feel compassion. Right. Compassion is probably more totally. important. Than yeah, you're right. Bad. Yeah. Right. Cause we're all learning and we're all growing. And, and that's, you know, one thing where, um, you know, it's like you, if, you know, you might feel sorry for the homeless man on the street, but maybe the homeless man signed up to be the homeless man to help right. you to feel compassion, to mm. teach you a lesson. Right. You know, it's not always, I mean, yeah. there, there are people that actually like sign up for the life to help yeah. others grow. To, to show you the highest compassion, to show them the highest compassion because they could have been that Roman soldier before. So now they need the lesson of the highest compassion. You know? Exactly. Oh. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's really cool. I, I really like this, the, you know, the way you work with, because uh, I've known you for a long time and I know you work with people uh, at this level and close people and people you've known for a while. I know it's, uh, you get filled up quick, but it's, it's a really interesting thing. I tried to get hypnotized once and I just wasn't ready for it. It was a past life, my very first time trying and I was also closed to it. So uh, I'll have to do it again on a different mind. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> All right, y'all. We know what time it is. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying the conversation that we were having with Cassandra. Uh, we know we enjoyed it very much. Uh, but we want to give you a little break here, like usual. Song is Foxes. The band is Elephants in Mud. The album is Stairwell. Um, you know, we have lots of elephants and mud on this show, uh, but it's kind of all we have access to right now. But even if it wasn't like still one of our favorite bands, so we want to make sure that we bring them to the world as much as we can. So hopefully you enjoy it and then we'll get you back to the conversation after it's over. <laughs>
comes to so when I'm, it's I'm my- curious mm-hmm. here um with i don't know with your type of work and the stuff that you have been shown or have learned over the course of your journey like how do you view the world like what is like life to you like just having seen so much like outside of what we can perceive on a normal day like in terms of how people celebrate their lives or like religion kind of stuff like that like i'm just curious with someone like you like how they how you go about like that kind of part of life that makes sense um i mean (laughs) the way the way i view things are, are definitely different and um you know, I, I grew up, uh, it's kind of funny because I, I grew up, my parents were Mormon, but uh, they they ended up falling away from the church before any of us were uh, baptized. And, and I'm the youngest of four. And uh, we, you know, like I said, we grew up at both Utah and Hawaii. And uh, for the most part, we went to high school in Utah. And having that, you know, it's like everybody is Mormon and, you know, all your friends are Mormon. And even I had friends that were Mormon and I wasn't Mormon, but I would just go to church with them because I still wanted to hang out with them on Sunday. So, you know, I was like the non-Mormon girl just kind of sitting there. And I remember taking like sacrament because I didn't want to like look stupid because if you passed it without taking it, like, Ooh, what's wrong with you? But, uh, you know, having that influence there, my, my siblings, um, my, I have two brothers and one sister, and they all ended up getting baptized when they were uh, like 17, 18. Um, my, my second oldest brother, he was the first to get baptized, and, and he asked you know, my parents, like, hey, you know, can you sign these papers for me to get baptized? I want to be Mormon. And they said, you got to wait till you're 17. You know, when you're 17, if you still want to be Mormon, you can sign your own papers. So that's kind of what they all did. And they all (laughs) ended up, you know, baptizing themselves. And then I was the youngest one and they all looked at me and were like, Hey, your turn, (laughs) you know, your your turn to be baptized. And, you know, I was like a, the black sheep of the family, like, (laughs) or, or a normal teenager. I don't know. I was, you know, drinking and, you know, partying and whatnot. And so part of me was like, well, no, I don't want to be baptized because that means I have to be good. But you know, I also had this kind of like, you know, just in the back of my head, like, well, what makes that church true? Because you have, you know, Christians and Catholics and Jehovah Witnesses and whatnot. And, you know, I would go to different people's churches and every single one of them were like, this is the true church. This is, this is, you know, (laughs) we're the true church. If you don't pick us, then you're going to hell. And uh, I kind of was in a space of like, well, I don't want to like pick the wrong one. So I just won't pick any, you know, and I I had this view that like, you know, church was like AA for religious people. Like, oh, you believe in Jesus? I believe in Jesus. We should talk about it, you know. And so Mm -hmm. when I was uh, when I was about 18, they kept bothering me, like, just talk to some missionaries, talk to some missionaries. And uh the missionaries came over one day and, uh, you know, they're like, okay, you know, your, your, your family, they all were baptized. They were all sealed in the temple. And even if you're the best you can be, you can never be with God. You can never be with Jesus. Um, you know, there's this line, they can always come visit you, but you can't ever go visit them. And, you know, I, I was just like, well, you know, you're, you're telling me mother Teresa's not with, God. (laughs) And they said, well, you know, that's why, you know, we do baptisms for the dead, for the people that, you know, didn't get to know the gospel. And again, I was like, question everything. And I was like, well, so, well, they're dead. How do you know they want to be baptized? And they're like, well, (laughs) you know, you still have choice on the other side. If you still choose to refuse the gospel, you know, that's your choice. And I was like, so you're like church raping people? <laughs> and then they, wa- they turned around and walked away. But I just had this, you know, like how can there all, you know, just be one way, one way to God, one path to Jesus, you know? And, yeah. and the craziest part is like, you know, through all of this, through all of these like regressions and spirit guides and whatnot, like 
I've talked to Jesus. I've talked to Buddha through people. And it's crazy because, you know, even Jesus once told me, <laughs> um, you know, it, it, apparently back in the day we were, we were pals. And so, Great. you know, he, <laughs> he was like, you know, you got to keep doing what, what we were doing. Like you got to keep, uh, you know, doing, continuing what we were, what we were doing. And I was like, well, what were we doing? And he said, uh, sharing the truth. And I was like, well, Jesus, what is the truth? Like I'm hypnotizing. There are aliens. There, there are dragons. I've come across jinn, which are like mm-hmm. genies. Like, I don't even know what's real anymore. Jesus. <laughs> you know. And he goes, does it, it does. Does it pardon. feel like you're swearing? Does it feel like you're swearing when you talk to Jesus and say, Jesus, no, no, I've, I've called, I've called Jesus a jerk sometimes. I'm like, you didn't tell me you jerk, you know, so I mean, he, he knows, uh, yeah. he knows my heart. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he, he basically was like, it doesn't matter what you believe in, what you call your God, or if you even believe in a God, what matters is that you're teaching everyone that we're all connected, that everything is connected. So yeah, I was like, well, well how, how do how do I teach that? And he said, tell your stories. And I was like, but Jesus, people are gonna think I'm crazy. <laughs> There's like aliens and dragons, and you know. And he's like, it doesn't matter. Right. I was like, ah, so we're just I'm just planting the seed. And he said, exactly. And eventually, the seed will bloom. So yeah, you know, yeah, that's I'm... all we can do. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, that's awesome. I've hmm. definitely, um, I believe in all of it. Cause I think, uh, like Andrew was saying, and you were saying that we are definitely lived past lives and like you were, you know, here to basically say you've talked to these, uh, past lives. So in my opinion, that's definitely how it works around here. Um, so, uh, like whatever happens uh, is supposed to happen. So that's the best exactly. part. You can embrace that and um, and try to find the best route, I guess, or just trust the, the process, right? Exactly. It's all we can do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, did you have a – like one experience where you just learned how to do it or you knew that that was the way you were going to go or someone, I I don't know if you said this earlier, but did someone like specifically say you should work with this um, spirit? Well, when I, when I first, I kind of learned hypnosis backwards. I, I learned, I was taught originally advanced hypnotherapy, which was past life regression. Um, I learned from uh, Dick Sotvin, who uh, recently passed away. Bless his heart. I love him. Um, Yeah. So I I learned from him. uh, And I remember when I was going through his his class, uh, he works with his wife, Roberta, who she's like a very, very amazing, um, psychic. And they came across, I don't know how exactly we got onto the topic, but they, they started talking about entity attachments. And they said, if, you know, if we ever come across someone that we know has entity attachments, which essentially our uh, energies or entities that are attached to somebody that can affect like their, their mood, uh, whether it gives them anger or fear or anxiety or sadness. Um, But they just said, you know, they almost kind of put this fear in everybody's like mind of like, if you know there's an entity attachment, don't work with them, like hand them off to someone who, who deals with that. So I was like, that's what I'm going to (laughs) do. I'm not going to, I am not going to deal with that at all, you know? And, and so when I first started doing hypnosis, it was like the universe kind of laughed at me like, ha ha, we'll show her. And, uh, I, the first entity attachment I came across scared the crap out of me. It, it, um, 
it was it was like a darker thing and i'm just like oh my gosh this is this is what it is and i don't know what to do with this and um that's when i uh, first uh, heard about like the jin um and then you know the more i tried to push it away the more started coming to me and like children would come with attachments and, you know, adults were coming with attachments. And the more I worked with them, the more I started to realize that like 99.9% of attachments aren't crazy, like demonic possessions. They're essentially people that have died if you remember, uh, you know, a little while ago, I just I, I said that, you know, the religions are like, if you don't do this, you're going to hell. Um, that's essentially what happens is people believe that so much in their heart that like, oh, my gosh, I didn't do this many Hail Marys or, oh, my gosh, I was an alcoholic and I beat my wife. I'm going to hell. So they don't they don't cross over and they end up being like these just wandering souls. So say if they were an alcoholic, they could go into a bar and find another alcoholic and like, Hey, you're an alcoholic. I'm an alcoholic and go into their energy and attach to them kind of like a parasite. And now not only are you an alcoholic, but now you have this voice in the back of your mind that you just think is your voice. That's like, you know, maybe you don't want to drink. And that voice is like, eh, one's not going to hurt, you know? Hmm. So, um, the more I worked with them, the more I realized that they weren't bad. They were just uh, like lost souls. And then once you cross over those souls, um, the problem goes away too. I've had people uh, have physical ailments go away from entities being crossed over, uh, fears, anxieties, angers, all that um, from – attachments and once the attachment is gone so is the problem so how many you know you look around the world how many people you think have that Mm. that's uh that's wild i feel like i ran into one of these attachments before after my friend took his life and i walked into the house Mm -hmm. where he did it so and then after that like three months was like complete hell and my roommate at the time said that they, she saw him like in the garage and it was really weird, but maybe yeah. that was similar to that. Yeah. And, and that's like the misconception too of like, you know, Oh, you took your own life. You're surely going to hell. It's like, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. That's just what they like Funny. to tell you to, you know, create my, fear my... so that you obey. Yeah. Uh, it's funny. My mom actually was really worried about me at the time, praying constantly. And then she yeah. called me and said, he went to heaven, by the way. And I was like, what? And it was weird because like before he did it, he asked me if people that do that go to hell. And I was like, I don't know. I never tried it. I, I couldn't tell you. This was before my... Uh, you know, massage world and introduction to more of the spirit <laughs> realm. Right, but, down the uh, rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I really feel like um, it tried to attach to me somehow, and it was really uh, strange. But eventually I came out of that and went to massage school and just, you know, grew and grew and grew. So it's cool. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, if you can learn from it, I guess. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and that's the crazy thing too, is like, even with the attachments, it's like you learn about that as well, you know, of like, oh, you have this fear of not being able to cross over because you don't feel like you're worthy or you're, you're clinging to your yellow Cadillac (laughs) because you're attached to it. And so you don't want to leave, you know, it's, Mm -hmm. The, the craziest things that, right. you know, people, people don't cross over for. And, I mean, like when I'm, when I'm doing massage and somebody comes in, um, like with something that hasn't crossed over, like the back of my legs and my arms go cold. Like I backed up into a walk-in fridge or freezer and, uh, I was like, yeah. Oh wait, who did you bring with you? You know? And, um, I, I, 
I sometimes like convince them to go under so we can find out who it is. <laughs> and then we just kind of talk them out. And, and some are just like, they don't even know them. They just kind of wandered in, you know, and it's like, all right, well, you know, there's a cooler light on that side, you know. For sure. Yeah. Hmm. And the beauty of working with this stuff is, you know, we care about everyone because essentially we are all one. So we got to look out for each other. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. uh, So it's a commitment, right? (laughs) Uh, It's a full time commitment to working with spirits and different spirit (laughs) guides, questions of craziness. (laughs) Hmm. Um, Yeah. That's, I mean, it's it's all very interesting. It's all I don't know. It's it's a very hard thing to wrap a mind around, mainly because a lot of people, you know, most of us are so rooted in the physical world that your mind isn't really used to processing this kind of information. Mm-hmm. Um, but okay, here's okay. So in the world of hypnosis, this is what I was just thinking. Um, and I forgot because I was listening to you talk and it just kind of swept me away a little bit. <laughs> um, but in terms of like, I don't know, like, is there, in your view, is there fake hypnosis out there? Like people who use it for entertainment purposes to like make money, like the people who do like hypnosis on stage or, you know, quote unquote hypnosis. Oh my gosh. I, I kind of have a funny story about that. <laughs> so, um, I had a guy call me cause I, I had never done stage hypnosis before, but I, I was really fascinated. I'm like, how can that happen? Like, there's no mm-hmm. way, you know? And, um, I had this guy call and he was like, you know, he's like, I'm really interested in hypnosis, but I was wondering if you can hypnotize me to, to not think. I said, what do you mean? And he's like, I I just, I I, I just want to get rid of the voice. That's always chattering. I just want to like not think for like an hour. And I'm like, you, you want to pay me to like put you to sleep? (laughs) Like, okay. (laughs) And so he comes in You know, and I felt really bad because like I always want to use my time for like, you know, doing good. Like I'm like, I can I can put you under I can I can give you positive affirmations. I can, you know, make you feel good when you wake up. But like, what else can we do? You know, and he's like, well, I recently had a stroke and, you know, I'm under a lot of stress and this and that. So like while he was under, I, I didn't have him talk because like once once the person talks then it's almost like it it gets them out of like the deep deep state that they're in and so um you know I was just like hypnotizing him to relax and just like each breath you take you you know the thoughts just clear your mind and you're just floating 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 yada 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 so did that for an hour, gave him some positive affirmations, told his mind uh, to, to communicate with his body, um, to heal any damage that, you know, the stroke might have caused. And then I woke him up and he goes, you know, was, well, was I hypnotized? And I'm like, yeah, because like I knew he was hypnotized because at the very beginning we were talking about it and I was showing him different ways of like putting people under. And there's there's one where you have them like look at the center of their, like your palm and you hold it above, you know, just where their eyes are kind of looking up, their head is straight, but their eyes are looking at the palm and it looks like they're, they're straining their eyes. Um, and you hold your hand there and you're just like, just stare at my palm. And then with the other hand, you kind of sweep across their face to mimic like their eyes closing. And, uh, when I did that to him, his head dropped (laughs) and I'm like, Oh, he's, he's an easy one. Like he just went (laughs) right down. So when, when he came out of it, he's like, well, I mean, I, I feel relaxed, but I, I, was I hypnotized? I'm like, yeah, yeah, you were hypnotized. And he's like, well, how do you know? Because like with stage hypnosis, um, you know, people go on stage and, and they think they're Marilyn Monroe. Could you like do something like that? And I'm like, you want to, you want to be Marilyn Monroe? (laughs) And he goes, no, but like, you know, like with something like that, you can, 
prove to someone they're hypnotized. It's like, could you, could you do something like make me forget my name? And I'm like, you, okay. I mean, I was like, I've never tried it before, but I'm, I'm down to try. And so he was sitting, you know, sitting straight up on my massage table. And I, I did the, you know, look at my palm and did the sweeping motion and his head drops. And I said, that's right. You just relax every breath you take. You become more and more relaxed. And and the more and more relaxed you become, the more and more your your name just slips out of your mind like leaves blowing in the wind. You know, I'm just like making it up. I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> but then I also have to like make up an excuse of how to get him to remember his name because, oh my gosh, that would be terrible. <laughs> so, right. so I said, you know, when you open your eyes, you'll, you've completely forgotten your name. In fact, what is a name? And, you know, until I snap my fingers, you'll instantly remember. I'll count to three, you'll open your eyes, and you will remember your name. One, two, three. And, and he, uh, he puts his head back up and he goes, did it, did it work? And I was like, yeah, do you, do you remember what I said? And he goes, no, I'm, I'm relaxed. And I'm like, well, I'm Cassandra. What was your name? And he goes, ah, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and it was the simplest name and he's he's searching and you can see he's searching hard and i'm trying not to laugh because i'm like oh my gosh it worked <laughs> you know and yeah, and he's like just like sitting something. there like oh my like what am I, uh name uh he's like didn't i tell you when i came in i'm like yeah but i i forgot and he's like, um, uh, uh, and I was like, oh, oh, and I snap. And I'm like, wasn't, uh, like, wasn't, he's like, oh, Joe, I'm Joe. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, like, that's so silly. Like, how you could forget. And he was like, how did you do that? That's amazing. Right. <laughs> so, me being me, I, I'm just, I go deeper. So I'm like, you want to do it again? <laughs> so this time I had him, I was like, when I snap, he'll remember. When I cough, he'll forget. <laughs> so for like 10 minutes, I sat there snapping and coughing. And oh, it was the greatest time ever. And he's like, can we do this again next week? <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy is going to pay me to do sage hypnosis. Heck yeah, wow. I'm in. <laughs> Yeah, might as so, well. Yeah, he's it's... probably very interested in in that, and uh, maybe he just writing a book, and he wanted to include something cool. Yeah, <laughs> something maybe like I or... don't know, but it was the next week. He he walked out thinking I was like the greatest alchemist of all time. So I'm just saying. <laughs> well, he's, he's pretty great. But keeping that in mind, though, keeping that in mind, how easy it is to hypnotize. I mean, think about like suggestion, you know, just using suggestion and like even, you know, with radio and program television, all of the things are being hypnotized to think and say and do. So it's crazy. That was Mm -hmm. one thing that Dick Sutphin, the, um, the uh, past life regressionist said, he goes, you can make this simple machine that you can get all of the instruments, all of the stuff that you need from Radio Shack, and you can build something that uh, can basically, he, you know how those radio waves always traveling through the air? He said he mm-hmm. made a device that can... Uh, basically uh make audible um uh programs like uh subliminal messaging in the radio waves and he's like you would freak out if you could hear what they're trying to program into you i was like what that's insane yeah like i'd rather not know i'm already down the rabbit hole with all the aliens and (laughs) Are are you uh, are you keen? You probably are with massage, like the four thirty two frequency and all that. The four thirty two frequency. Yeah. Oh, like, the hertz. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, that's part of it. That's part of it because the four forty, which we're you know auto tuned everything into, is basically a mind control uh, frequency. 
and 432 is closer to nature, which I can't even figure out how to get a podcast to 432 without taking up a whole hard drive or something, you know? So uh, right. it should be the other way around where it's just automatically 432. But back in the day, someone got paid off to make it 440 for some reason. So, right. Yeah. Because why not? <laughs> yeah. We, you know, might as well be good, but good Americans and listen, right? <laughs> but that's for a whole nother podcast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm getting off. On- <laughs> Do you guys have any like other spirit guide questions? I know we we talked about it a lot, but was there any other? No, how like so? Do you have um? a website or do you like, how do you get clients or do you like, are you taking on new people or tell us about like that? Like how we, how people can get in contact with you if they're interested and do you do remote sessions? I do do remote sessions. Um, first I'll start with, uh, how to contact me. I am busy. So I'll give you, um, my website. It is hands that heal you dot biz. And that is a website for uh, my massage, my energy work, and my hypnosis kind of all in one. So um, my number's there, but I don't recommend calling because there's I'm so busy. I don't answer calls. So either uh, yeah. you could text, you could leave um, – Oh, don't leave a voicemail because I'm really bad at that too. Email. <laughs> Email me Email. at cassandra.hthy at gmail.com. Um, yeah. And then uh, for remote sessions, um, I do Zoom sessions. Uh, s- sessions, like if, if for a past life regression, I'm all for getting comfortable and like, you know, relaxing and whatnot. And it's really hard to do in front of a zoom camera of like trying to sit straight up. Um, so if you wanted to do something like a past life regression, uh, like phone calls are usually, um, better for that. Uh, but yeah, I do zoom and phone and, um, usually my clients are, are one-on-one, but I'm, I'm pretty booked i'm i book out about a month in advance so expect that if you're trying to get in <laughs> i'm usually not a hey do you have any openings today <laughs> for sure yeah it's good to be like that and um one more question for you i think we went into it but might as well ask it again uh is there like a common message that the spirit guides keep telling you or is it different for all aspects um kind of like how i was talking about the different levels of the soul um depending on the soul level is essentially the message because each soul is kind of on its own journey. So if you have like a beginner soul getting the message of an advanced soul, you can create chaos (laughs) because they're (laughs) going to be like, what am I supposed to do with this? Right? So usually the message is based like per person, you know, there's a lot of uh, like, I I do like to ask, um, Uh, guides a lot you know like what is what is Brandon's greatest gift in this life what is um what is the greatest lesson they're learning right now you know things like that um Mm. overall like if if you wanted to kind of blanket you know an overall message is essentially like you know what Yeshua or Jesus was was saying of of essentially like we're all connected so Mm. you know it, it it doesn't matter the journey you're on, we're all trying to get to the same destination, essentially, in the end. Absolutely. Yeah. Have you heard of the law of one? It's similar to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With raw. Yeah. I've actually yeah. had, had raw, <laughs> raw spoke through some people too. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. powerful. Yeah. Have you heard of, uh, real quick before we go, ha- mm-hmm. have you heard of, uh, like, praying mantis alien type of beings yeah yeah that was uh (laughs) i actually came across those are higher levels those are those are uh usually like uh, six 
seven dimension. Uh, yeah. they, they look freaky, but they're, they're very high vibrational beings. And I came across uh, one of my, it's kind of funny because he's a very like, like, uh, secluded. I don't want to be around people. I'm just in my own space. Uh, he had a guide like that when I first hypnotized him. I was like, let's bring in your spirit guide. And mm. he's like, he looks like a bug. <laughs> and and it was freaking him out. And so I I asked uh I asked him what his name was, and he was like, I can't say that. It's a bunch of like chirping noises, like you know and i said okay can can you give us something in english that we can we can just call you and he goes john doe i'm like oh he's a smart ass <laughs> and uh i said okay john can you can you turn yourself into something more human like to make to make him more comfortable because you're kind of making him uncomfortable right now. And he said he turned into, um, Brandon, uh, you might be too young for this, but um, I, I'm not sure how old you are, Andrew, but I want to say it was like back in the eighties that had that, like, I can't remember his name. It was like that Pepsi guy where he's like that head. Do you remember him? Where he's just like mm. this head and he, he like, he spoke and it was like very robot-y. <laughs> it was like creepy. That's what he kind of turned commercial? into. And he, huh? Or was it a commercial? You said Pepsi guy. Yeah, it was like I don't know. The, I, like he was used in a Pepsi commercial, but I think he was his own like little character on on a on a show. Um, I keep getting Max. Max okay. Max, Max, Max. I was born uh, in '84, so maybe I was too young. He, yeah, no, I, I mean, I was born in 81, but, and I was, I remember being young and seeing it, but usually the older I'll generation knows, <laughs> but knows you, what it is. But you were saying it was like. That it was what? That you were saying it was, uh, you were relating it to the the being or. Yeah, so his his spirit guide, um, even though like in this life, I mean, maybe he's a very advanced soul, but he's not doing very advanced things right now. Um, but he was really, really wise. He used to study Buddha and all that, but he's um, he kind of like got away. He, he doesn't really like people, like humans. <laughs> he's just like, people bother me. Um, but it, his, his, it was his spirit guide that was wow. this bug looking thing and i was like well if that's your guide man maybe you gotta crawl out of your cave <laughs> <Step again. laughs> exactly i think the world needs you because <laughs> yeah. okay, so i was just confused so do you be, are you were you talking about the seven up guy like the spot uh, seven. it's like a red dude with like yes yeah, he's like a red spot because no. pepsi had like the the guy but that was like the 90s was and they 90s. had the polar bear like no, right. I'll, I'll have to. Uh, I'll have to look it up because it was. Um, yeah, it was. Yeah, because they had the Seven Up had like the cool spot was their was their guy. He was just like a red circle with arms and legs and sunglasses. Um, hmm. Pepsi had at some point they had like some like an actual full body person. Oh, okay, his his. Oh, it was a Coke. Sorry, his name okay. is Max Headroom. <laughs> Max, Head Max. Well, I guess it says Coke and Pepsi. Yeah, Max Headroom. Oh. Google it. It's creepy. Fictional <laughs> character. Correct? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he, yeah. So he's he's like, oh, so it looks like a human, but he's into? not human. It, his, he's just like really weird, robotic yeah. looking, and that's what he kind of yeah. turned into. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's like I was like, oh, you're funny, John Doe. You're funny. <laughs> Uh, ah, yeah, that's really funny. It's really yeah, funny. so that's what he. That's uh, what what he do they call him in the Matrix? So, like, yeah. uh, um, but I, I, I do remember, you know, before we we really yeah, go, yeah, so, I remember you asking, uh, um, Mister Anderson, Brandon. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you uh, so much for all your knowledge. Uh, this was really amazing. Everybody can check you out on your website and send you an email so they can hopefully get a session maybe a couple months down the road. Um, but 
uh, yeah, I think this is a uh, really powerful work. And uh, maybe if you're struggling, try it someday. Or there's uh, lots of different types of hypnotherapists out there in all parts of the world. So uh, I'm sure, you know, do your research and get the person you need. But thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, anytime. Uh, Wait, was there? I'm sorry, I don't know. Am I freaking out, or Cassandra? Were you about to say something else, or am I like? No, I I was. I was, and then I, like uh, time glitched or something. Yeah, I th- I think my uh, I don't know if it's my computer doing it because uh, I started saying something and then Brandon started saying something and it was this very like robotic, uh, you know? And so yeah. I was like, wait a minute, what's happening? <laughs> okay. Okay. So, all right. I'm just making sure like, yeah, there's not an actual glitch. It was me. Here, so. <laughs> <laughs> it did, I, I, I think so. I don't know I, if you just I've said you're talking like or what. Delay. Yeah. There was a really, no, I like, hear what, a delay. The, the last thing you were saying it's Yeah spirits yeah i know matt that Come max forward. headroom is is laughing <laughs> at us we've, ang- we've angered him <laughs> i know right yeah max no, is what messing I would, with us right now i think <laughs> probably probably uh i was gonna say before um because i remember we were talking a little bit uh before we really got on and i remember you saying something about like um techniques that people could tap into or do themselves to essentially maybe uh, tap into their own guides. And that's one thing I wanted to to kind of at least leave you with is that a lot of people, you know, they think like when psychics, you know, are, are hearing spirit that they're, you know, saying like, Andrew, tell Brandon not to go, you know, and, and (laughs) that's not how it is. I mean, that would be in a way, really creepy (laughs) but (laughs) but it would be a little more convenient than us having to guess what you know our feelings are and whatnot but um how spirit speaks is through thought language so when you get like a thought an outside thought or an idea that just comes out of nowhere um you can start paying attention to where it's coming from because there's a difference between when you have your own thoughts of like, oh, I think I need to go make myself some macaroni and cheese because I'm hungry, or you should call your mom, right? Mm. And when you start paying attention Mm. to where that extra thought is coming from, you'll start to become aware of like, oh, that kind of weirdly came from like the left behind me, you know, but it's like still essentially in your head. Um, but it's it's almost like when I say not your voice, it's it's like when you think to yourself, you have like your own head voice thought. It's like slightly different. If that, does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So just yeah, you know, become fully you know more aware of your thoughts and let your conscience be your guide. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah, that's good advice. I like that. I'll try to I'll have to think about that going forward. Yeah. Well, awesome, guys. Fantastic. Well, yeah, yeah like Brandon said about five minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for um yeah, we definitely appreciate you coming by. Uh your knowledge is uh most welcome and very much um appreciated. So I wanted to yeah, we wanna thank you for doing that, coming by and letting us be your first official podcast that you're on and hopefully this will be some good experience for you going forward yeah um, definitely we will, yeah we'll definitely share your information as far as your contact and your website with in our in the episode like in, in the description and all that kind of stuff um so yeah awesome well thank you guys for having me I, it was fun yeah absolutely um yeah well the you have to keep going more into this and maybe do another, do another episode here. Just kind of, I'm sure we've only scratched the surface of, <laughs> yeah. of the subject. Um, so yeah, that's, 
they'll have to do it again. Yeah, yeah. There's there's much down the rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all of which I'm very interested in. So we will we'll have to do this again. I think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. You're welcome. Thank you guys. <laughs>